Hey everybody, quick note about the video. This one took a while to edit because, uh, once again, I had technical issues, but I knew about this one in advance. Uh, well, and it was enough that I actually wanted to do the redo instead of just um, dealing with it and being like, oh, not too much happened, right? A lot happened in this segment, and I was like, dang it. So for the first, I think, 30 minutes or so, if I've edited it right and I'm thinking about it right, um, there's what happened is the video is actually fine. It's not like last time at all. I redid the video, redid, you know, the whole segment. But what I did is I kept my original commentary in. And then as I was doing, because I was piecing it up to kind of align with, you know, the, the new video, right? Like the redo video. And I ended up keeping the webcam in also because it, you know, kind of matched up a little bit. Like there was really nothing as far as I could tell that was like, jarringly different you know it was like oh my gosh you can tell that she is obviously doing something different you know what I mean so um but there are moments where because I had to realign like the the commentary with the new recording um there's going to be segments where my webcam goes away because I've cut it and the commentary to realign it right and I'm not going to try to input something there so the webcam will kind of be in and out but mostly there anyway that's it for the explanation at the you know the beginning intro explanation I will have timestamps that try to explain things and clarify things as we go but like I said the video looks fine it's just uh, I just want to give you guys a heads up for why sometimes the webcam is going to be popping in and out at the beginning anyway so uh thank you all so much and the video will start in a second Hello everybody and welcome back to Dragon Age Veilguard where we had to redo the dying scene for some reason. Uh, I just want to make sure... Yeah, okay. I don't know why. Like We've picked up the stuff. Like We've been through here. So I've noticed, I've been noticing that we don't, our meshes don't interact with the characters at all. Like we go straight through them. Um, which is... <sighs> I think part of the reason that sometimes combat gets so hectic is because I like start merging with the characters and like I get so that it's, it's so that they don't like block you in somewhere probably um, or like you know because sometimes it can be annoying to have like uh, no time for hide and seek a son this is real be nice be nice to your baby a son. does it mean something? arrow it's Elvin for arrow <laughs> Elby grows into it that's what felison means slow arrow more dogs born here. Lance also, this was just supposed to be a home. training it's going exercise. After me of the More griffins? Whole family. Oh. Brothers and sisters. That would be a good reason to run ahead. Because I was kind of like, why did that guy run ahead? The bridge and leave his out. companion behind. This but I mean, Grey Wardens are no stranger to death. Or sacrifice, you know? There's a ladder up there. That's our way to this. Good job. So, you're telling me. Satisfied squad. You're telling me that, uh, potentially, through the dagger, if I don't have Dabber with me... Make this quick. We have to thank get you! Um, I could just summon a song with my dagger, is what I'm trying to say. That cannot be good. That cannot be good. There's an elevator we can use to get up there. There's also this, but it's probably not going the right way. It's probably just like a, ooh, a chest, you know? Ooh, a chest. The elevator's behind that blight. Let's get through it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we're, your, your people are being hunted and, and the griffins and everything, but I wonder, no, never mind. I was like, I wonder if the griffins, oh. Never seen dark spawn this bold. Unless there's a light. There's a bolt. <laughs> the wardens told you this? I told them. <laughs> I can't, your first sorry. one doesn't want our help. <laughs> that was uh... a stubborn one. What does this dark spawn want with Griefens? The real question's how it knows about them. Up until now, it only went after wardens. Now it shows up here with a rabble of dark spawn? These griffins are a secret. Even within the order? Like, I'm sure not everybody knows within the order. Weathered inscription, cookie tail, courageous warrior, slayer of Archdemon Andral, and beloved friend of Garahel. Garahel! Garahel is the elven warrior who killed 
the Archdemon Anderal. I think when it attacked Antiva? I think. It's like the second Blight. Cookie Tail, what a cute name. Meh. Oh my gosh, that baby! Yeah. Exciting squad! <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, no, the Force Warden is probably, you know, as per usual, corrupt. I mean, more corrupt than usual. Yeah, Blight Rappers. Uh, <laughs> but... Yeah, it's and it's given away secrets. And doesn't want to help because it would hinder his plans. I gotta say, I gotta wonder what, like, maybe he's far enough gone that, like, they're manipulating him through the blight. That's something. I didn't even think about that. The fact that, like, Corypheus in the last game was able to manipulate the warden through the blight. Not, I don't think he can, he could, he could be control of all of them, but he could, he could, like, body swap with them, and he could, um, like, utilize the blight in them, which meant he could activate the calling in their blood. Um, but it's too weak to like actually be like puppeting them around unless it like takes over the body like one at a time You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, we if the, these gods can manipulate light the great wardens once again will be in question I hadn't even thought of that. I'm like light. We need the wardens and then I'm like JK JK send them back send them back <laughs> You know uh, Yeah, the recalcitrance of the, of the leadership to like listen to anything I mean, they, it, it seems like it tracks for his behavior, like he's a stubborn guy, but why, it keeps like, why is it, is it because I'm locked in? Okay, I'm gonna stop doing that then. If there's like multiple, multiple creatures, it's like, the camera's having a hard time. I'm doing pretty good. This is definitely... Under the blind it's boy. We better take a look. Damn it, it's Lance. I want this thing's head on a pike. Bloodstained notes. Training going well. The Griffins learned faster together. One picks up a trick, then the others try it out. How loud they get. The little mischief makers, they're also growing faster than I thought. I'll ask Davrin to the rest is eleble. Um Oh my gosh. It's so cool to be in an area though that has like dedicated Grey Warden like imagery, like in in the landscape. Underfell, the only people that live there are like really hardy people and the Grey Wardens, right? So they have like massive statues like throughout the country, you know what I mean? And I can see how being a first warden here in like a high place, thinking that you're the only one with the solution to the world's biggest problem, or at least that you think is the world's biggest problem, uh, which it, it is a significant like said, problem, the blight, like but um, how you, it could make you distant from the people you're supposed to be protecting and thinking that you have all the answers, you know? I can hear the other Griffins. Let's get in there. This was the thing that they spoiled in some of the promotional material. That, 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 that was that there's multiple Griffins. Like I thought there was just like one, but it would have been really cool to like all of a sudden walk in and be like, "Look, here's a bazillion. Why are they in cages? Why is there red light all over the cages? Babies, the babies. The ba oh my gosh, get More the babies. Creatures. We have to get them out of there. Can't. Oh, Some is that why they're glowing? On these locks. It's okay, Highness. Calm down. You too, Rumtail. We'll come back to both of you. The babies! Me. Seeing Blight in the Andervels again is like a wild thing too, right? Like it's already been through so much. Yeah, come here, you coward. I should not. I don't know why I brought Lucanus. Just like because I was like, oh, have it. But like I should not have brought Lucanus for this. Getting. Oh, there's more wardens! Editing Squirrel here. I left this segment in of the redo footage uh, with the, no commentary and no video because, or no webcam rather, because I totally kicked this ogre's butt on the redo. He actually kicked my butt the first time around. Uh, on the original footage that's all messed up, but I did a really great job the second go around, so I felt very proud and wanted to just keep it in, so there you go, you can, you can watch me kick this guy's butt, even though I usually edit out the combat, so a treat, or a delay tactic, who knows.
Like the enemies? Don't worry, Big Two. Where are we at? We'll get you out. Oh. Oh. Magister, it looks. The blood is mine. It's a Magister. So it can talk. I'll spill mine before that happens. And I'll collect, Warden, on both of you. What? 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 I... Yeah. yeah. No one needs to spill what? anyone's blood. We just want the Griffins. They were never... I actually, yours. that's not what I wanted at all to say. The line said something about, you know, be, you know, oh, no need to be nasty. And then she's like, we can talk. That was weird. The baby. There are only 13 griffins alive in Thetis. That monster just took 12 of them. Even the ones way back there. What if we could help get them back? I'd ask. What's the catch? I need a monster hunter. For the blight to end all blights. The first warden agreed to this? We're rogue. Uh... Hmm... The first warden is wasting time. Treating this like any other blight. We can't wait for him to take action. Mm. Going against Weishaupt's orders? I don't have a choice. There are powerful mages behind all this, and we have to hunt them down. Well, you did save Asan back there, so you're no lightweight. And if you can help get the other griffins back... <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so cute! the idea. He's so... He's hoping you brought food. <laughs> Come on, Asan. Oh, whoa. Let's get to know our new friends. Also, like, but wouldn't he have to, like, report? to Weishaupt, you know? And like, again, the Wardens having independent streaks is not an uh, an unknown thing. But also like, did she really just take all the, the griffins that were even that far away? I mean, they had blood magic on them, but like, I just, I'm like, what, you took all of them? Oh, I don't know if you can see it, but I am wearing my Skyhold hoodie today. I forgot, I forgot to point it out. Yay. So this is where you live, huh? In the Fade? Yeah, it's cozy. And the gods can't find us here. Right. Never going to get used to that. We'll find you in a sun and nice. Oh no. What's wrong? A lot. No. The Viper just sent word. Mirathus is under attack by a blighted dragon. What? Has to be the one we saw at Demeter's crossing. Well, one of them has to be. What do you mean, one of them? Ah! Taya also got in touch. Another dragon is attacking Treviso too. Mierda. You got back just in time. 
I just what? I'm like, I mean, that's technically an arch demon, except except if it's just a regular blighted dragon, then it's not an arch demon because it's not an old god dragon. It's just a blighted dragon, which is bad enough. Two blighted dragons. And luckily, we just the warden just pulled up and is like, oh, 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 is it? Oh, this is my cue. It's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Any sign of the gods? Two dragons at once can't be a coincidence. If it is, the shadow dragons and the crows didn't say anything about it. Last time you saw the dragon, the gods were nearby, no? I mean, They'll be I don't know, somewhere. they were... Treviso's a merchant city. It has no defenses, and the canals run everywhere. If we don't stop that dragon, people will die. Innocent people. My people. They either die right away from the dragon, or slowly after, from blight in the water. We need to go to the Yeah? Tenisha. And lead Minrathus uh. to burn? Nev. The shadow dragons will fight right to the end of it. But we're the only ones keeping the Venatori in check. And if we fail, the Venatori will take advantage. They'll make a push for the throne. And hand the gods the entire Tevinter Empire. I honestly think if we if we wanted to make the call of we have to defeat a dragon, our best bet would go to Minrathis because they have ma like supposedly magical defenses and stuff that should help them. A city full of free mages, like you know what I mean, like it, it should be able to defend itself more, and so we'd have more help. But in that also, it should be able to defend itself better. And Treviso, again, is an occupied merchant city with no standing army that has been occupied and a large portion of their fighting force probably debilitated or gone, you know? And I, to be fair, the Kunari would fight the dragon, but like, uh, you know? So I do think, and I know it's like, oh, you, you're kind of eyeing Lucanus for a romance. Treviso is the most undefended city, and so needs our help the most, but is it a lost cause would be a question, you know what I mean? Like, is it a lost cause to try to defend a nearly undefendable city? Like, or, you know, undefensible city. Uh, um, I mean, they just got a bunch of baby griffins. I wonder if Gillenon actually made the griffins. I wonder if that's something that she technically did a long time ago. I was thinking earlier, I wonder if the griffins coming back is tied at all with the things the Solus has been doing, you know, in any way, or like the gods moving. Like it wasn't these gods. It wasn't Gilnon and Elgrenon, obviously, because the Griffins have been around for a while now. But like, like for at least a year, you know. Um, so yeah, but the. I wonder if something Solus was doing kind of activated eggs somehow. You know, they better tell us in game how they did it because I don't remember the book very well. I mean, what kind of dragons are they? They're blighted dragons. Have we been able to? Damn it! There's no time. I need to go home. I need to be in Minrathus. And I must go to Treviso. Go where you feel you must, Rook. We cannot wait. What's our move, Rook? I uh. I mean, I would send some of you. I would split the party here. You know what I mean? Like, and the problem is, is I'm gonna send Nev away. Yeah. Help Nev and the Shadows stop the Blighted Dragon and Mirathus and prevent a Venatory coup. Help Lucanus and the Crows protect Trevisa civilians from the Blighted Dragon and the resultant Blight poisoning. I mean, this is not... Again, like, I... I this is the more politically expedient one. But... And Dorian's there! <laughs> You know what, if it ends up being that Dorian and May Varys don't make it because I picked Treviso, I will reload. Like, that's just how it's gonna be. Um, again, Minrathis is able to defend itself better technically. And a Venatory coup is not necessarily gonna kill all the citizens right out the gate, you know what I mean? A blight point you can't we can we can do something against a coup, you know, but we can't do anything against blight poisoning. Like I don't think there's a way to cure that, you know. And they're already like beaten down from the invasion, you know? Like if if they the ones who need our help the most are them. We help Lucanus and Treviso. 
We have to trust that the Shadow That's... Dragons can take care of things in Munrathus. I think the best. That said, yes. the two of you Thank should you. go never there. Thank you. See if you can help. And we'll head to Treviso. I'm Understood. very glad. Let's all try to make it through this alive. He's so much right? taller than I am. I'm just, I'm not used to being such a short character. Um... I do wish I could, um... They did not do Davrin any favors with his card. Like, Lucanus and, and Harding look really good. Davrin is, is, is a little odd. But... Belarus is... It's okay. It's fine. In war victory? Mm. He's so cute! Oh my gosh, Davrin is so cute. Uh, this is rough. This is rough. The two most attractive men that I have right now. Right there. And it was sad to see Nev and Lucanus because I've been bringing them out a lot and they've become friends, right? Kind of? So seeing them be like, I'm so, I have to go help my people, you know what I mean? But I'm glad we're splitting the party because it always frustrates me in most of the Dragon Age and Mass Effect games where I don't utilize like most of my party. Listen, the dragon, the Antam brought it here The Antam brought it? They're fighting cross. And saying the dragon will break our meaningless What? Resistance. Bastards! And it's just gonna kill everybody, also? Oh! I mean... And the crows aren't designed for this. Like, they're not designed for, like, a full frontal assault. This is... This is showing all the weaknesses in in Antiva's battle, like to oh dear, oh good, uh, strategy of having the crows do everything. I thought the Antam would fight the dragon, but I forgot they're being manipulated. At least their leader's being manipulated. Oh my gosh! Oh no! Oh my gosh! Your health. You have much, so much health. Uh, that does make sense that they would think that. Um. They, uh, oh, they're still alive. Dang it. Um. Not bad, Rook, for a Mourn Watch. Um, like, the Kunari, I, I was thinking, because, like, the Kunari do like to fight dragons, but they revere them in many ways too not like worshipfully but they do revere them hey these are gray wardens i think the gray warden shields look at that i hear i think i hear lucanus out there actually ice it's, we have to kill that it's an ice dragon it's an, it's an ice dragon yeah they're like oh it'll break the crow resistance it's it's just killing everybody it's just fighting everything well I'll, yeah oh my goodness Rook, you're just in time. Where the dragon attacks, the Antam soon follow. It is strong and fast. You must get its attention, then lure it onto the ground. We'll figure out a way. I've got a, a warden. We will need it. He knows how to fight dragons. Ostensibly, like, I, you would think they would teach them how to fight dragons, because that's what an archdemon is, you know? I think, oh yeah, my ultimate is full, how convenient. Hello? <gasps> Ignorance! <gasps> Mortal confusion! Uh, yes, the city offers nothing better than a pawn of the dread wolf. Kill a name. Your hatred could not stand against us ages past. He will not help you now. She the shoulders on the lower the dread wolf's dagger. The lower half? Come get it. Retrieve the life of whatever else remains of these mortals. Alright, well that works then. We've got it on the ground. Hmm, that was Gillanon and she's so spooky looking. Oh my gosh, she's so... Corius the Ice Talon. Alright, alright. Okay, let's see. Do you have detonation combo opportunities with anybody? That did almost nothing. We are so doomed. So much out. Well. 
Oh. What? She keeps doing that, or she keeps pulling it away when she could just command it to eat us, you know? I mean, obviously it's having a hard time, but still. You fought it off. If Gilanane had him called it away... We would have been here for ages. It'll be back. Next time, it dies. That thing was tough. It'll be hard to put down for good. What happened to Treviso would have been worse if you hadn't arrived when you did. I cannot imagine how much worse. Still have to help with that dragon in Minrathus. If we even... Let's go. If there's anything left. here what's the situation look around i don't know where to start treviso's all right lucanus um we stopped the worst of it even if we couldn't kill the dragon the venatori had a clear shot at the palace while we faced a dragon we could barely hurt the viper drew it away from a safe house and took a claw to the gut as thanks. A healer could fix the wound, but the blight's already in him. I know of magic that may slow the corruption. That'll give me some time. This is all you. The risen gods, the blight, the dragon. Now the city's lost to the Venator. The oh. rogue isn't to blame. It is what it is. Ah. Uh. Tensions a little. No, high. I like the viper. I need to be here a while. See to things. I just don't see how a city full of mages, like powerful mages, could just be like, oh, boop, and fall over. You know what I mean? Like, realistically, it doesn't make sense. And I don't know, Gillanon herself could have just reached down and killed us, you know? Blighted like, dragons, why didn't she do that? Darkspawn obeying the Venatori? Maybe Solus will know something. And not the Viper, now I feel bad. Uh, I mean, I was going to feel bad anyway. Probably Taya or somebody would have gotten blighted. But... I mean, he's like, I, lo I love a masked character. And yeah, it's Matt Mercer's voice, but like, I love a masked character. And his fit is like, real good. And like, I don't know, he seems like a good man. Like, doesn't speak much, but like, a good person. Like, and honestly, we could, the thing is, is it's like, oh, okay, you could, you would know of magic that can slow the blight. That's fine. But become a Grey Warden, maybe? Or maybe if he slows the, ma the blight and then... Because he wants to, like... Because you could probably die. Even, you know what I mean? You could probably die... It's like a 50-50 shot or more to die. If you do the the blood ritual. Like, the ritual for the wardens. Um, so, and he needs to be alive to try to do this a little longer with the shadow dragons. But, but you could always make it an option. I mean, darn well... I, of course he's gonna know something. And I, he probably had to deal with, like, sort of, like, inside... Do you think, maybe? Like, he does... Actually, no, he mentions it in Trespasser, where he's, like, the reason I was able to, like, lead you to where the Antam are, to, like, where the Kunari were, like, like doing their plot. He's, like, it's because I was able to get agents easily inside the Inquisition, you know what I mean, and manipulate things from the inside. And he's, like, the thing about having a massive organization like this is that it is susceptible to rot from the inside you know what i mean or susceptible to corruption or not even like because his agents weren't actively like trying to like undermine the inquisition necessarily but it's like it's susceptible to outside influence the larger it gets you know like you can't keep it contained so i'm and i'm wondering if he because he says he learns that from experience right B being a general in a revolution 
So I'm wondering what sort of betrayals maybe he had to deal with, or like people giving away inside information on him to the Evanuris, you know? She's hardened. She can no longer support the party with this ability. Um, uh, do we get to undo that? I get that she'd be upset right now, you know, but like, can we, could we, you know, maybe reconsider? Because it's blocked, it's blocked out of everything. I can't level her up. Oh, wait. Harden the strength of this skill is increased. Oh. So this is the only one blocked out. She just won't heal anybody right now. That's a very, that's a very support player thing to do. To get mad and not heal somebody. I respect it. But this, but she also has ones where she actually increases her ability. Nev actually has really, I like, I like Frost. It's generally one of my more favorite, like, ice, I think is really, really useful. I like freezing enemies, and I like shattering them, <laughs> I like slowing them down. Um, so with her time magic here, and her eyes, like, I should, I should probably bring Nev out more. Like, I already have been bringing her out a lot, but I'm gonna, what I'm saying is I'll have to rotate the squad a bit more than just, you know, like, the, the hot ones. I mean, Nev is attractive too, so, works out. Uh, we just finished making our very important decisions. A very important decision. And now, I don't know if the hardened state will go away? Maybe she will at least heal us again someday? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Solus gets a chat in two last. We are busy. We need to go talk to Dad. And we... Oh! Is this for Varric? So if he has something to say, it'll glow? It's, I can't see it from where I pop in. Dad! Don't panic. Things always seem impossible. Just fight one battle at a time. This is the first time I've ever seen Varric, like, for a character as, like, a father figure. It, you know, two, he's, like, Hawk's best best friend. Like, the game writes him to be like that, but, it, like, I just went into it being, like, Varric's my best friend, and then they wrote it so well, and I was like, Varric is my best friend as Hawk. But with the Inquisitor, it was just, like, more of a, like, you know, oh, hey, like, you know, a, a good acquaintance. Like, she never really, like, neither of them ever really got to know Hawk or very very much and that's because me as a person found it like weird not weird but like a little odd a little awkward because I'm like he already his best friend is Hawk my other me like my other character you know what I mean like it's weird I don't want to be like oh very gonna be my new best friend again it's like no nah, like, you know like, for me anyway right like very is obviously very friendly with people but him and Hawk have a very special relationship and like you can't get in between that or around that you know what I mean like it's just they're just peas in a pod um so yeah but this is the first time i've had a character where it's like i think she sees him as a father figure like a mentor at the very least you know what i mean and it's so funny being so short all right i'm gonna go talk to nev and be like are you okay oh she does not want to talk to me i don't think actually wait is this yeah nobody wants to talk to me except for asan or um, a song for, um, you know what I'm saying, um, <laughs> Devrin. Oh, oh yeah, she's in, like, the, she's in somewhere with Harding. Where are they at? They're in the kitchen? Okay. Where is this? How did you get so good at Harding and Ballara. Oh, it's mostly a survival thing. Accidentally release a couple demons or rile up the local wildlife with misdirected magic a few times and you learn what not to do. Oh. Hmm. I do. I want to I need to come by after every thing like that happens just so I can hear little funny funny things that happen. Where is Lucanus is on the stairs? Did I completely miss him? Did I like run right past him or did I just go up the wrong set of stairs? Like he's on the stairs from the Alluvian. That's awkward. <laughs> it's like he was waiting to talk to me, like to catch me and I went the wrong way. Wait, no, 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 no. 
He is actually, is he up here? Am I? You are up here. You're wandering around. That's that's really cool. Mierda. This place makes my eyeballs itch. What? Why? Hang on. This is actually very, very cute. And I'm going to take a photo of it. <laughs> Don't mind me. The way he's like, it's like he's leaning in, right? Like they're re I like that they, that the characters react to each other. It's like, like when my character t touched his shoulder when we were getting ambushed by Asan, is one of those things where like oftentimes in Bioware games, they don't, or in lots of games, they don't like to do body mesh touching because it looks weird. It's like really, really hard to make the code work to make the body meshes interact in a realistic looking way. So it's like they don't do it oftentimes. Or the, like if, so, if a character hands you something, it's often under the screen. So like you'll see their arm like kind of go under and like hand you something, but it's just out of view and your character reaches towards it, but it's just out of view. And so that's how they get around that, at least back in the day. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> he kind of looks high, honestly. Trying to get an angle. Nah. She looks disinterested. He looks like he's paying a lot of attention. He looks like he's planning on how to murder her, honestly. Very cute. Very cutesy. Very demure. Um, let's see, where else? There's a real. Nev oh, Nev stayed in Minrathis. Okay, that's right. She's not just here at my beck and call. Teehee. I'm so sorry. Asan. Asan. Davrin. I want to call him Asan. I don't know why. Davrin. Davrin, 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 Davrin. Who has Asan. The cutest little thing to ever be adorable. Wait, wait, let me see if you got... What do you got? I haven't been able to get up here. He just hears, like, he, like, waits for her to come in and just hears her, like, running around outside. And he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, listen, this is the first time this area's been open to me. No! <laughs> I tried. Alright, up uh, door. Unhappy squawk. What? You hungry? I found a yam in the kitchen. That is not what griffins eat. Stubborn just means you'll starve. <sighs> Trouble settling in? Doing the best I can. My job was to keep the griffins safe, not fix their dinner. I meant a son. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I guess we're both adjusting. Yeah, yeah, you, you but drop the lore. What's the history between Grey Wardens and griffins? Back in the day, Grey Wardens raised them as aerial cavalry. When a blight got going, Wardens rode them into battle. Isn't that so sick? Eventually, war took its toll. They died out. Then where did Hassan and the others come from? The way I heard it. Someone found a journal a few years uh -huh. back that mentioned a secret clutch that of That was in the book. They'd been hidden for centuries, protected by a ward. Started hatching and out came 13 talkative griffins. Now, down to just one. That's so cute, though. But, but they're not, it's not a viable population, you know, because they're all technically related. E you know. He's cute. Well, a confused griffin should fit right in around here. Appreciate it. There's no training manual for them anymore. I guess we'll figure it out together. <laughs> Happy squad. Griffins don't trust easily. Lance and Remy had to work to win them over. They said a warden and a griffin have to move as one. Think as one. They call it Turlum. Sort of unity. But now, they're both dead. Why'd the Gloom Howler attack the Airy? I intend to find out. First it stalks wardens. Now it's after the griffins. Doesn't seem right that they'd go extinct twice. Not if I have anything to say about it. You sure you'll have time to help? You've got a lot on your plate. I do. Elgernon and Gilanane. Hard to believe. Our very own elven gods are ending the world. Yeah. That'll endear us to the rest of Thetis. Yeah. But I have to say, killing a monster is one thing. 
Taking down the goddess of all monsters. She is the goddess of monsters. The god of vengeance. Okay, so we're this, I think. But not I mean Mythal was um Mythal was more, I think, just as he was like harsher than she was, and she was like a a calming influence. And I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna risk it. And uh, just like try really hard not to fight. I'm gonna squint. Elven Pantheon. Let's just go right into the Dragon Age wiki. Just no, 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 no. I'm not even gonna read any of it. I'm. Oh, I actually I have. I downloaded somewhere a file that has every single codex. That this was a while ago. Um, I was thinking about once putting a podcast together for Dragon Age and like just talking lore with one of my really good friends. And like deep diving into lore and stuff like that. So I downloaded all the codex entries for uh, all the Dragon Age games, including the DLC. Somebody put it up, they made it available for free. And I don't remember where it is, but that would be a safer one to look at. And it would give me the more accurate old lore. Um, you know what I mean? Like it would give me the old lore description of Elgarnan. Oh, he is called the God of Vengeance in in the in this is an Origins Codex entry. Nope, not that one. Oh, there he is. Okay, I'm going. I'm gonna read it out. This is the this is the Origins Codex entry for Elgarnan. Long ago, when time itself was young, the only things in existence were the sun and the land. The sun, curious about the land, bowed his head close to her body, and Elgarnan was born in the place where they touched. The sun and the land loved Elgarnan greatly, for he was beautiful and clever. As a gift to Elgarnan, the land brought forth great birds and beasts of sky and forest, and all manner of wonderful green things. Elgarnan loved his mother's gifts and praised them highly and walked amongst them often. The sun, looking down upon the fruitful land, saw the joy that Elgarnan took in her works and grew jealous. Out of spite, he's shown his face, his face full upon all the creatures the earth had created, and burned them all to ashes. The land cracked and split from bitterness and pain and cried salt tears for the loss of all she had wrought. The pool of tears cried for the land became the ocean and the cracks in her body the first rivers and streams. These, hold on, you remember the, the, the artifacts that we saw in, with the Veiljumper quest, um, when we went with Bellar to go do, like, the artifacts to like stabilize them and we saw the one that was a burning one that was like the fire of Sal like Sal Salaza's firefly or something and we saw one that was doing perpetual water and that was what an unmaking like thing like once whatever it touched it unmade but it was pouring out water i wonder if this is at all if those are if, if this goes back way back to like the old entries right like if they're pulling from that i wonder if that is like a parallel on purpose Mm, where the sun burnt everything and then the, a pool of tears it just says that the land cracked and created a pool of tears and the pool of tears became the ocean and the cracks in her body the first rivers and streams Algonan was furious at what his father had done and vowed vengeance he lifted himself this is very uh what is it like greek pantheon right where zeus is like screw you punches I almost said Thanos. <laughs> um, the god of mm, time, Kronos. Mm -hmm. He was furious what his father had done. He lifted himself to the sky and wrestled the sun, trying, determined to defeat him. They fought for an eternity, and eventually the sun grew weak while Elgarnan's rage was unabated. Eventually, Elgarnan threw the sun down from the sky and buried him in a deep abyss created by the land's sorrows. With the sun gone, the world was covered in shadow, and all that remained in the sky were the reminders of Elgarnan's battle with his father. Drops of the sun's lifeblood, which twinkled and shimmered in the darkness. From the tale of Elgarnan and the Sun, as told by Gisharel, keeper of the Ralafarian clan of the Dalish Elves. That's where we get a lot of our... Gisharel is the one who does a lot of the elven stuff. Here, you know what? While, while we're here. Gilanon, mother of the Hala. They say Gilanon was one of the people in the days before Arlathan, and the chosen of Andril the Huntress. She was very beautiful, with hair of snowy white, and as graceful as a gazelle. 
no, what we have now. She was oh, she kept always to Andrew's ways, and Andrew favored her above all others. One day, while hunting in the forest, Gilanin came across a hunter she did not know. At his feet lay a hawk, shot through the heart by an arrow. Gilanin was filled with rage for the hawk, along with the hare, is an animal much beloved of Andrew. And Gilanin demanded that the hunter make an offering to Andrew in exchange for the taking the life of one of her creatures. The hunter refused, and Gilanin called upon the goddess to curse him so that he could never again hunt and kill a living creature. Gilanin's curse took hold, and the hunter found that he was unable to hunt. His prey would dart out of sight, and his arrows would fly astray. His friends and family began to mock him for his impotence. For what use is a hunter who cannot hunt? A shame. The hunter swore he would find Gilanin and repay her for what she had done to him. He found Gilanin while she was out on a hunt with her sisters, and lured her away from them with lies and false words. This is very reminiscent of, like, what is it, Artemis's? There's like, there's, like, an Artemis story where Artemis has, like, her favored women that she, like, hunts with. Or, like, the nymphs, I think, that she keeps and protects. But I think... In one of the stories, of course, one of them gets lured away by, like, Apollo or something. Uh, he told Gilanon that he had learned his lesson and begged her to come with him so she could teach him to make a proper offering to Andrew. Moved by his plea, Gilanon followed the hunter, and when they were away from all her sisters, the hunter turned on Gilanon. He blinded her first and then bound her as one would bind a fresh kill from the hunt. But because he was cursed, the hunter could not kill her. Instead, he left for her dead in the forest. Oh, wow. He couldn't even kill anything. So, like, not even a fish? Uh, Gilanon prayed to the gods for help. She prayed to Elgon to vengeance, to Mother Mythal to protect her, but above all, she prayed to Andrul. Andrul sent her hairs to Gilanon, and they trooped through the ropes that bound her, but Gilanon was still wounded and blind and could not find her way home. So Andrul turned her into a beautiful white deer, the first Hala, and Gilanon found her way back to her sisters and led them to the hunter who was brought to justice. And since that day, the Hala have guided the people and have never led us astray, for they listened to the voice of Gilanon. Okay, see, I thought Gilanon, like, she, like, cre I think in Inquisition there's an entry, I'll have to see if I can find it, where I thought she was the one who created the Hala, like, when, and when she was told, um, to stop, like, she had to like, get rid of a lot of her creatures that she had made, monsters that she had made. Um, she was able to only leave a couple behind, and Hala was one of them. Okay, this is the story I was thinking about with Mythal. I'm sorry, I'll put, I'll try to put timestamps in so that people can skip this if they want. But Mythal, the Great Protector, this is the one I was thinking of with her and Algarnan. Algarnan had defeated the, his father, the sun, and was all, and all was covered in darkness, and only we had the stars left, right? That's what it sounded like, like the drops of blood, you know, in the sky. Pleased with himself, Algarnan sought to console his mother, the earth, by replacing all that the sun had destroyed. But the earth knew that without the sun, nothing could grow. She whispered to Algarnan his truth and pleaded with him to release his father, but Algarnan's pride was great and his vengeance was terrible, and he refused. It was at this moment that Mythal walked out of the sea on the earth of the earth's tears and onto the land. She placed her hand on Elgarnan's brow, and at her touch he grew calm and knew that his anger had led him astray. Humbled, Elgarnan went to the place where the sun was buried and spoke to him. Elgarnan said that he would release the sun if the sun promised to be gentle and to return to the earth each night. The sun, feeling remorse for what he had done, agreed. This is very Greek. And so the sun rose again in the sky and shone his golden light upon the earth. Elgarnan and Mythal, with the help of the earth and the sun, brought back to life all the wondrous things that the sun had destroyed, and they grew and thrived. And that night, when the sun had gone to sleep, Mythal gathered the glowing earth around his bed and formed it into a sphere to be placed in the sky, a pale reflection of the sun's true glory. Algarnan, God of Vengeance. From... Oh, it's the same as in, Inquisi as in Origins. Okay, it has it listed if it, if it is the same. The 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 Gillenin one is to there must be like specific ones then that talk about like different tales you know I found the Ascension of Gillenon. Gillenon kept herself apart from the people. She used her power to create animals none had ever seen. The skies teemed with her monsters, the land with her beasts. Andrul hunted them all, I remember that. And after a year of killing, approached Gillenon with an offer. The gods would share their power with Gillenon, but only if she destroyed her creations, for they were too untamed to remain among the people. Gillenon agreed and asked for three days to undo what she had made. On the first day, she struck down the monsters of the air, except those she presented to Andrul as a gift. The dragons, maybe? On the second day, she drowned the giants of the sea, except those in deep waters, for they were too well wrought, and pride stopped her hand. Pride, as in, like, pride is capitalized. It's like, ooh, just her pride? Or, like, did Sola stop her? And is that the Kraken that we saw on the map during the unboxing video of the map that I have that Bioware put in Rook's coffer? Are we actually going to see a Kraken? Um, on the third day, she killed the beasts of the land, except the Hala, whose grace she loved above all else. This is how Gillen was made the youngest of the gods. So that one implies that she made the hollow, but in the other one, it was implied that, sh that, what's her name? Andrew made her into a hollow, like made Gillenin into a hollow. I've, so there's a song to Elgarnan here. 
Algernon, wrath and thunder, give us glory. Give us victory over the earth that shakes our cities. Strike the usurpers with your lightning. Burn the ground under your gaze. Bring winged death against those who throw down our work. Algernon, help us tame the land. Winged death? A dragon? Okay, maybe the dragons are not just... I was definitely associating them with Mythol more than anybody else. Um, but it seems like all the gods are associated with the dragons. And he is the god of vengeance, whereas... Mythol, what did we call? She's the... She is the great protector. So he's the god of vengeance and, like, war and victory. But she's the great protector. She seems to have more of, like, a measured justice thing, whereas he's just, like... But she also, at least I swear, something we read in the Temple of Mythol is that she is, she's also sort of her purview is like vengeance as like the, as like a dark side of justice, you know? Yeah, I totally got distracted on that. But um, what he's saying, right, taking down the goddess of all monsters and he's a monster hunter. Um... But, and it, it is nice again that she said our gods, right? And like, to be fair, like, they, he might not have been raised Dalish. I don't know. He doesn't have a, he doesn't have a recognizable Dalish tattoo. Um, but uh, it's still, he brings up a good point that once again, this will make things even right now very difficult for the elves. If people hear that it's the elven gods who are killing people and like doing all this blight stuff, the elves already have it really hard as it is, you know? And again, I really am not a big fan of, like, tearing down the, like, ancient belief, religious, like, cultural belief system of a minority group. I think we're working towards tearing down a lot of them, but right now the elves are taking a big brunt of it, but... I think this is, like, again, kind of in, in two, it's almost a good chance to be honest. In two, I was always, blo like, blocking everything with humor. Um, but it, I don't have to be, like, a, a fail-proof leader, you know what I mean? But maybe we'll make a, we'll make a, hopefully make a joke about this instead of it just being weirdly positive. I know. Our problem around here is we think too small. <laughs> okay, then. Good to know the boss can laugh about it. Not really. Yay! But dwelling on things won't help. Yeah. The baby's hungry. What? I told you. It's yams or nothing. I mean, or we... maybe you need we, a new menu. Yeah. But go talk to Lucanus. The baby? Can I pet the baby? A, a real griffin, you guys. Like, this is... Like, why the camera mode is wild. Uh, real griffin. Look at the baby. The baby! <laughs> Oh my goodness, he's so cute! A griffin, look at him. With his little his little beans. He's got his little beans. And he's got his his uh reptile beans. And just little floppy ears. He even doesn't look quite fully for like you know what I mean? Like he looks like a fledgling. It's so funny. So cute. Are these supposed to look like that? Why, why do the pots look broken? Why are they hanging like that? Why do they look not complete? Is it because I have the graphics on medium? <gasps> oh, I can see, is that how it is on the, it's, oh, they're full, they're like green and full of sand. And these ones have skulls in them. Oh my gosh. And this is like, oh, it's an ogre. It's a, it's a warden attacking an ogre. I thought it was a dragon for a second. Did you carve that, or was that in here? You know, you know what I mean. Oh, cool! Oh, whoa! What? He is a monster hunter. Look at it. What is this? Like a dragon tail? I bet you this is a dragon tail. That's probably like ogre horns. He's got a nog anatomy chart. That's so cute. Oh my gosh! Look at this little bear and a little nug. And freaking whatever. This is the skull of. <gasps> griffin skull! I bet you this is a griffin skull! With the beak? It's only because of the beak and like the forward-facing eyes, but this bit up here made me think it was like, uh, 
like a like a water creature of some sort with like a like a bony crest that went like low like aerodynamically but like or like hydrodynamically but this is probably aerodynamic more and is that a pelvic bone and a rib cage boy, boy you sleep under a rib cage are you you can't i can't this is there's an invisible wall i just wanted to jump on the bed and look up at the rib cage i'm not trying to be weird <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying. I just want to look at the rib cage hanging over your bed. <laughs> it's weird that you have a rib cage over your bed. Why do you have the? Is it a? Is it a pelvic bone? It looks very much like a pelvic bone, because if that's like a, if that's a skull of something, it's very weird. It's a very weird like bat-like skull with eye sockets that don't go all the way through. That wouldn't make any sense. You know what I mean? You'd have to get like the ocular nerves to go through. Like that's why it's hollow. That's got to be a pelvic bone, or maybe a scapula, a, a weird one, a really really weird one. <laughs> but I like these. If he's like putting them, in, it's weirdly green. Like I think it might be because maybe my graphics aren't super super high. But the see through ishness is intentional, I think, because there are. These ones that have skulls in them, which is such a vibe, such a look. I like that. Anyway, I like his place the best so far. Why is it, why is it so many spooky hey's going on? <laughs> Alright, we have stalled long enough. I've spent I've spent time in the deep lore. And now it's time to go talk to Solus, I believe. Is there something I can like interact with on this? Nope. I can jump on this table, but I can't jump on Darvin's bed and look at the rib cage he's got up there. Lame. I don't think these are coming back, but I keep waiting to see if these paintings come back. They're probably supposed to be frescoes, but they're like, if they are, they're like so thin. Like frescoes are supposed to be like a thicker plaster material, so I, I, I'm more inclined to think paint. I'm more inclined to think. Solace! I've been reading the deep lore. Tell me. Secret. I gotta, I gotta be hanging out. We're gonna save right before this. Hmm. And we just saw that memory of him. I wonder if we'll be able to bring up the memories that we, that we encounter. And have I missed any? I just uploaded episode six today. So like that tells you where we're at. Like I'm, I'm barreling ahead. It's nice that we don't have to sleep. Just meditate. When last we spoke, you intended to assault the cruel and the corrupt in hopes of finding servants of Elganan of Gerene. Has your search been successful? You could say that. It looks like both the Venatori and the Antom are working for Elganan and Gerene. Unsurprising. The Venatori want magical secrets, and the Antom want to destroy anyone opposing their brutal expansion. Both will readily bow to anyone who promises them power. Well, the Venatori want to return to Old Tevinter. Magical secrets are just a way they're doing that. And the Antom uh, apparently are bored right now. This particular contingent of Antom is bored. And I still think we should call them Talvashoth because if, they, if they're not being... Unless it's sanctioned. If it's sanctioned, they're Antom. If it's not sanctioned, they're Talvashoth, you know? Yeah, anyway, quick quick little interrupt, but, um, we'll, we'll be, what is the word, um, like, he's like, I'm not surprised, and, but again, it feels like, sort of like, you know, it's like, but they're hurting people, it's like, well, yeah, they are, you know what I mean? But I don't want to fall into the trap of being like him and being this, like, stoic. Let's do this one. And now, we've seen that power firsthand. The Antarm and the Venatori both have dragons doing their bidding. Dragons? That is worse than I had feared. Oh, yeah. good! Oh, good! We drove off the one the Antarm brought to Treviso. Barely. Have you determined how the dragons are being directed? If it is blood magic, it may be possible to disrupt their control. The dragons were blighted. Blight. We think that's what let the gods control them. The blight? Of course. The blight seems to be the gods' favored tool right now. We ran into Venatori who could control Darkspawn. 
Algernon would not bestow such power unless the Darkspawn were to serve as the main force of his army. And I suspect Gillanane will see the Darkspawn as new subjects for her... modifications. We've already run into a few Darkspawn nobody has seen before. That's in addition to the Blighted Dragons. That is the fate Algernon and Gillanane planned for this world, then. Corruption and blighted slavery. Um... I mean, that was... no. And maybe, like, not, like, knock it off, you know, where it's like, you know, oh, you're trying to be holier than thou? That's what we're getting at right here. He did not want corruption and blighted savories. So this is, like, uh, uh, Solus is a way better god to, like, even if you don't like him, Solus is at least, you can talk to him, like, even if it doesn't necessarily work. And he does, he was trying in his own way to, like, minimize the damage, right? Where, like, he was trying, like, he had things in place, like, the, it could have been so much worse if he hadn't cared, but he does care about the every person, you know what I mean? And he does care, but he's also, like, carrying this really heavy burden of the thing he did in the past, and, like, he's stuck in the past, like, he can't... When he looks in the mirror, the only path forward he sees is back, like that, like that, um, Codex History we read, right? Where that person, I think, interpreted it a little differently, but Solus, when he looks in the mirror, he only sees going back as the way to go forward, you know? And it's like, you have to try to show him that there is a different way forward, you know? But, like, we haven't done a very good job of that so far, you know, like just in general in the last ten years. But we'll uh, we'll be like, mm, okay, yeah, but um. <laughs> right. Everyone should be free and uncorrupted when your demons and raw magic kill them. Do you truly he did actually. My goal was to destroy this world. He said I that. Your goal, like you said, was to transfer the gods to a better prison, the one you're stuck in now. And you were willing to tear down the veil and destroy this world while you did so. The Veil is a wound I cut into the Fade in a moment of desperation. While making their prison, it should not exist. I had a host of spirits ready to help when the Veil fell. They would have minimized the loss of life. Where's Cole? Also, I have been periodically asking myself, uh, where's Cole? And even like when I'm not playing, I'm like, where's Cole? Um, because I have some headcanons that Cole stayed with, because I made Cole more spirit instead of more human. So it was, there was hope that he, at the end of inquisition he does say something about trying like he can feel cole or he can feel solace being sad essentially through the fate i'm pretty sure that's something that he's that he's like implied and I, in my head canon too is that he stays and helps the inquisitor after everything because the inquisitor is like you know having a really hard time and she probably helps try to find he probably helps her try to find solace at least for a bit um and again yes he had a host of spirits ready to help when the veil fell so hopefully maybe we can we can, um, we can access that maybe in the future. Um, but he did say at the end of Trespasser, when you're like, it's like, why did you help us with the Canary plot? You know, like, why did you, why did you put us on the trail of that? And he said, because I, he says, I am not a monster. And that's what he says. He's like, because I am not a monster. And he wants people to be free. And he says, if they must die, I want them to die themselves. And again, this is very important to him because with Cole, it was very important to Solus that Cole stay true to himself, right? That Cole be the compassion spirit that he is um and in we know in the memory he says it again right with the destruction distraction spirits or whatever they were chaos spirits you know he says at least they died being what they are and they were not changed and i think something happened when mythal asked solace or brought solace over or however solace came over from being a spirit because i that's my theory is that he was a spirit many people's theories that he was a spirit and was brought over somehow into a mortal form or was asked or was forced to in, like inhabit one you know um or to become one and i think it changed him as a spirit right and now he that haunts him and it hurts him that he is not the person, the spirit, the whatever, the entity that he was supposed to be. Um, and so I think that is a big part. Or maybe it happened to Mythal too, where Mythal's been changed, right? And he was, he loved her in whatever, in however way he loved her, he loved her. Um, maybe something happened to her, but yeah. But I think, yeah, it's like minimized really, but... And I kind of want to say we didn't know simply because it's like, well, if you had just, 
maybe if you had asked for help, like, you know what I mean? Like, if there was, if we could, like, I don't, but I don't, it's like, you know, like, there's no way we could ask, like, the institutions, they wouldn't have helped, but, like, because they'd be like, they don't want change, you know, they want things to stay the same, you know, but, like, potentially the Inquisition would have helped, or some people would have helped, and it's like, more magic, or something, something could have helped to, like, contain it, you know, and it's not like the fade itself would like destroy reality it would change it but like i don't i don't know it's like there had to have been other options and and but i i think like ratty like ragging on him for it is like petty like like we're ragging on petty things and it's like so i don't know this i wish i could quick save like you can in Baldur's gate because i'm torn I want to say this just to be like, well, you didn't, you didn't tell us anything, you know what I mean? But also, it's like minimized. Mm, yeah, maybe, yeah. So, best guess, how many deaths? Hundreds, thousands. At least, those deaths would have been on my conscience. But the world would once again be as it should be. Oh, and here I was worried. Many mm. would have died, I know. But afterward, flowers would grow again. Spoken like a god. I am not a god. Yeah. I am as I have always been. A man. All too aware of his failings. <laughs> I aware that if he did not act, accepting the judgment it would bring, all would be lost. They call me the Dread Wolf. What will they call you when this is over? <laughs> That's the thing that is funny that Varric, Varric got him to a T, right? Where Varric's like, you know, he'll, you know, he'll be, he'll be sad, like, he, he will, what, what was it, like, you know, he'll, he will see a thousand deaths, or like, see the world burn, but be sad about a blackened flower, you know? And it's like, it's like, he's like, oh, but the flowers will grow again, and I want to be like, bro, the flowers are fine, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, bro, <laughs> they were, they were growing, they were flowers, like, it was fine, you know? But he's, he's probably being metaphorical about it, and, like, maybe the flowers grow, like, he will, he will fight, he will see the old flowers that he saw, where it was a mix of, like, mortal and fade, you know? And, uh... But yeah, and the thing is, he's, he's like, all would be lost, and I'm like, well, I mean, we every, we were trucking along just fine, you know what I mean? Like, the separation between the two, as far as we know, nothing was going wrong with it, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, maybe it was sort of a half-life, maybe it was not the way that things used to be, but, like, you instigated that change in order to prevent something worse from happening, and now you just need to live with the consequences, trying to undo it is not going to undo what you did, you know? And it's not gonna change the lives you took then. And I truly think, like, as much as like, as like, you know, whole, holy, now like, martyry he gets about it. He's like, those deaths would be on my conscience. I, and as much as like, oh, I'm sure that'll make him feel better, you know, stand in the ashes of a trillion dead souls and tell me if honor matters then. The silence is your answer. Thank you, Javik. But like, you know what I mean? Like, I do think he would truly feel the guilt for that. Like, I honestly think he would, but it's like, that doesn't, that doesn't change the fact that those people would die. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not, doesn't make them feel any better, you know? Um, so, yeah. But, like, he's not evil! Like, and this is my argument, right? I don't know, like, I, I don't know, I'd want to get into that, I guess, necessarily, but it's like, that line he's like i'm a man as aware of I, as i ever was of my failings and i'm like bro i want my like lover like my inquisitor inside of me is like screaming right now but i'm also like dude stop you just your plans you keep doing you keep messing things up please please stop you know <laughs> like um won't be that bad. Mm, I'll worry about that later. Mm, I mean, it is what it is, right? Like, that, that's kind of, I think, how she'd be. Like, you know what? Like, she, again, a woman of action where it's just like, you know, people will call me what they want. They have. Oh, I, I'm called a troublemaker now for making a decision that I felt needed to be made. You know? So it's like... I don't care what they call me. If they're calling me anything, it means they're still alive. That's Ooh. all that matters. Acceptance. Ooh. 
You are willing to face the consequences your actions may one day bring because the world needs you. Oh, I baby. believe I can work with that. If the gods are using dragons, you will wish to find someone trained to fight them. Have you unlocked the Lighthouse Alluvian? Yes, we found the crossroads. It's still confusing, though. I cannot help you from in here. You may need to find an expert in the magic of the Fade. And if the Darkspawn are to be Elganon's army, you will need Grey Wardens to fight them. I've got a few of them. Their leaders don't trust me right now, though. I have Classic. faith in you, Rook. You seem to have a knack for gaining the cooperation of your adversaries. Oh, is that what we're gonna is that what we're gonna call this right now? Okay. Also, he's like, I believe I can work with that. I'm like Manipulation? So you just Elven straight up telling god me God thinks we need a dragon hunter and a faith expert. He's, he's not right a god, he says about the dragon hunter at least. Tash. The shadow dragons did all they could. The dragon was just too much. The moment the dust settled, the Venatori rushed in. Guess they knew it was coming. Nev's staying for now. She said she'll be back soon. But at least you took care of yours. We hurt it, but didn't kill yeah, it. Yeah, but the dragon flew off before we could put it down. Treviso could have used a dragon hunter. That much is true. I mean, we could have known she did have a dragon, like Gillen, and we heard her call that other dragon. Um. What was I thinking? Oh, can, like, anybody use the Alluvians? Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I mean, could we be, like... It's like, oh, the gods can't get to us in here, but, like, are we the only ones that can use the Alluvians that are so handily placed all over the various cities, apparently, in people's houses and on the rooftops? Like, could anybody just walk in, you know? And an expert on fade magic. I mean, we have Emmerich left, and we have... Tosh, and we have who else? Is that it? Emmerich's a necromancer. Didn't necessarily call him a fade guy. And she's kind of a fade expert. Maybe I'm pointing at her, but it's Bellara. But she, she's more like artifacts, like the physical manifestations of stuff in the fade. Then we find one. Next time a blighted dragon comes calling, it'll be the last time it comes calling. We should not forget the second dragon in Minrathos. We ought to see what we can do to help. However, there is no telling how long Nev will be helping the Shadow Dragons with the aftermath. Hey, let's not get stuck Ooh. in our regrets, all right? Hang on a minute. Very Not only have you retained the services of a demon assassin, you're also taking advice from the elven god who attempted to tear down the veil. Spite is my problem. That's what they always say. Rook, <laughs> is one thing, but do you really trust this Solus? Uh, I thought he was talking to Varric. Um... <laughs> trust is such a strong word, you know? So you <laughs> trust him. Uh, yeah, no. All right. <laughs> So, a fade <laughs> expert and a dragon hunter. I'll ask around about dragon hunters and see what turns up. Come talk to me in a bit. And I've been corresponding with someone about the lighthouse's reverberative oscillations and the resulting dimensional peculiarities. Oh, sorry. Not relevant. I'll get a message through to a fade expert immediately. <laughs> see, Rook? Nothing to worry about. I'm glad right. to see you up. We all know what to do. Let's get going. It is nice to have Varric around, honestly. Lucanus approved. Bellara Harding. Okay. Sick. Um I love that Varric just walked in for the very end of the conversation and then we all leave. It's like, oh thanks for coming out, Varric. But it is good. You're supposed to you're not you're not supposed to totally lay yourself up. Like you do need to um moving around so you don't get blood clots and it also like just increased blood flow helps heal bone faster Duh. team turns once again to solace so i'm like a little worried i don't want to like finish the game like too fast 
I, I, I looked it up the, like today, I think, and it was like 50 to 70 hours, depending on how long you play it. For me, it'll probably be like 100 hours because I sit around chatting all the time um, and doing lore dives. Um, but maybe less. Probably, I, I'm thinking in like the 70 hour range, which is a little short, kind of. I'm like, ah! like, it's like I've been waiting 10 years for this game. And like my sister said, like she's been playing it, but she plays so fast. She plays Inquisition in like, I don't know, 40 hours. I don't know how she does it. Um, but she, uh, she's like, oh, she's like, if you don't do, I think any of the faction or not many of the faction and region stuff, she says she's gotten to the end, kind of the, the beginning of the end game within 39 hours. And I was like, ah, like, I do not, I do not want that. I, I've been waiting a long time for this. And while I don't want it to be like a 500 hour game, I also don't want it to just be like a 45 hour game, you know? So Anyway, I'm a little worried about that, so I am going to try to do more unlocks and stuff. I want to unlock, like, memories. Like, now I'm like, where are the memories at? You know, where's Solus's memories at? Are there more hidden in the crossroads somewhere? You know? And, uh, because I only saw the one on the way to get Davrin, so I'm like, where that? Also, Neve is going to be, mm, she can't leave it, huh? Maybe we can go visit her and help? I, I sh I'm sure we could do something to help. Why don't we, the crows owe her in a way, you know, like we could send some crows out to assassinate some people. See, this is why it's like in real life, honestly, I think Minrathis would have done better. I, to be fair, the Venatori, if you get, if you get a group of fanatical, you know, extremists who storm your capital, uh, you know, things go down. So, um, <laughs> yeah, if, if that had happened, if, you know, if that happens in Minrathis, right, where the Venatori had more of a foothold than we hoped I could see them like, you know, you know, miraculously crazy how the freaking like guards that were supposed to be all around the Capitol, you know, building where all the important people are, were just mysteriously gone. That's crazy. You know, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> so not unrealistic, but, um, Still, I had I'd hoped that Minrathis would fare better, but I know in the game they have to keep it kind of even Stevens, right? Like, it, it, unless, otherwise it's like, oh, here's the right choice and here's the wrong choice, right? Like, oh, always leave Minrathis to fend for itself because Treviso will be totally destroyed if you don't. You know what I mean? Um, but apparently the blight's not going to be so much of a problem into Winter. Like, we were worried about blighted water, although that was probably because of the canal thing. But like, there was already. In Minrathis, we already had Blight getting into the water already, didn't we? Yeah. Like, it through the grate. Like, they were already doing that. So the whole city should just be kind of dead as it is. Like, everybody should be dead. Everybody should be a ghoul by now. If the Venator just put... put If their whole thing is just to, like, Blight everybody, then, like... Because at this point, they're not being subtle about it, right? Like, the Blight, they're just, like, throwing it everywhere. And because now they can use the Blight. In the previous game, it was just Red Lyrium and Blood Magic. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. I want to do some of these and see if I can unlock more areas that have more memories because, gosh dang it, I have been listening to the, those two songs on Trespasser, those two that I mentioned, on repeat for, like, two days straight now because I got that soulless memory and I was like, <laughs> and now I'm just, I'm just purposefully making myself sad. But anyway, thank you all for joining me. I appreciate it. I'm going to cut away now and say thank you to my patrons. All right, really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, including my Acorn Tier patrons. Thank you so much, Fane, for your support. I very much appreciate it. And I want to give an extra special shout out to my Sapling Tier patrons, Reese Galito, thank you so much, and Sebastian James, thank you so much. I appreciate your guys' support. Uh, and I want to give an extra super special shout out to my Forest Tier patrons who have gone above and beyond in their support of me and the channel and who I truly, honestly cannot thank enough. So thank you, Christopher, so much for your support. And thank you so much, Nightshade, for your support. I appreciate you both very much. And thank you all again for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one. The, like, the, like, described squawking is actually so funny. Like, sad squawk. <laughs> you know, excited squawk. And yeah, I get that dialogue. What ha like, what happened there? I thought she was. Gonna, I thought my character was gonna say something like, you know, hey, whoa, whoa, you know, that's a. You don't need to say it like that. We we're just all gonna, you know, or like, don't get me involved or something, something funny. But instead, it was like a placating, like like a positive one, you know, where it's like nobody needs to get hurt. It's like this is a talking dark spawn. 
stealing baby griffins. Like, I will destroy you. Oh, also, the other thing is that we, like, when we do the thing where it's like, we don't need permission, the first warden is wrong, I think that actually, without me realizing it quite, when I did it, tracks with, with, with what she's done before, where she's gone against orders, because she was like, those are wrong orders, and we need to do something now, otherwise you know, things are going to go terribly wrong. And again, that's kind of like what the Inquisition did, right? Where we didn't need anybody's permission. And we just did it. I mean, we had, like, the writs, you know, like the writ of Inquisition and stuff. But, like, or Cassandra had it, and so she activated them. But it was like, the Inquisition was formed because nobody else was doing anything, right? And it was like, somebody needs to do something. And again, this is carrying over into here, where it's like, if nobody else is going to actually do anything, by golly, I'll do it. Do you know what I mean? So...